He's back! He's alive again! After so long, we never thought that he would return, but he certainly has. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The theatric dyspraxic is back. Hello, everybody. Uh, I am the theatric dyspraxic. I have been gone for quite some time. Uh, I think it's been about 10 months since my last video. I'm just kind of walking around my apartment now, so the lighting just keeps rapidly changing. Uh, not very professional, I don't think. I was almost going to go into my room, but I don't want anyone to see that catastrophe. So, as I said, this is sort of my return video. I guess I'm back again. Uh, it has been a long time. I don't know if I'll stay back. I don't know how often I'll make more videos, but I uh, had a couple of things that I wanted to discuss. It has, because it's been almost a year since I've done any of these, there's been quite a few changes that I'd like to talk about. So, this is that video, and just so that I avoid rambling at all costs, I made a few talking points. Yeah, so, let's get started. So I've been thinking about bringing this channel back for some time. There was a reason that I sort of pulled the plug on it. Um, there were a few reasons actually. Uh, the main one being that I just I just did not like making videos and I just did not like making videos starring me. Um, I hate to say that I don't like making videos. I just I, I whenever I started this vlog I had no idea what I was doing. I had no idea how to make vlogs. I mean, I knew that you just kind of point a camera at yourself and talk about your life and what's going on with your life or in your life. Um, but then I realized as I was doing it just how tedious it really was and how to really be real successful at it, you have to be a very you have to be a pretty confident person. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and switch this behind so that I don't look at myself as I'm making these videos because then I will get distracted. So I started this channel about a year ago. I think it was August of 2018. And my, my initial goal, uh, if I really had one, um, was to, um, I, I, I was going through a lot of sort of personal things at the time and I needed an outlet to kind of share my story and talk about this things going on in my life, the dyspraxia, uh, the depression and just various different things. And my initial plan was to go into, uh, just sort of all the the different elements that kind of brought me to where I am. And um, because, you know, there were certain things that have happened in my life that were um, kind of, I don't want to say interesting. I mean, I guess they were interesting. I don't want to say they weren't, but um, there were a lot of things that have happened to me over the years that... I felt like were worth sharing to people. But as I started trying to make vlogs and, and trying to make a channel where I talk about these things, I realized that I was going about it in the wrong way and that maybe it just wasn't really the right platform for me. Because, you know, I'm pretty good with having conversations with people, you know, if I'm just sitting in a room and just talking to somebody, if I'm being interviewed, which I don't really, you know, no one's going to interview me, but 
if I were to be interviewed and just sit with somebody and have a conversation, they ask me questions and then I respond. But if it's just, if it's just me, just talking into a camera like I am now, then I feel like I come across really dull and really boring. And it's not that that's necessarily who I am in general. I'm not always just really dull and boring and depressing. It's just, I don't know, I get, I get kind of, I get kind of camera shy. I get kind of nervous and, you know, I'm not very good at organizing my thoughts. So whenever I try to convey a certain idea or a certain expression, then I often just ramble and then I lose my train of thought and that often happens. So that started to happen in the beginning. So whenever I realized that just me talking and just going nowhere with it wasn't working to keep on track, I thought that maybe the best thing for me to do would be to uh, write something beforehand, sort of script it out, and then read from the script, kind of like an act. Then it would be like acting, which is something that I'm used to. You know, I, I've, I've done theater, I've done acting for a long time. So I realized that um, maybe it would have been better for me. But what happens with that is I become such a perfectionist that I, I try to, and I try to make these videos pretty quickly. So I would get on my laptop and I would, I would, whatever topic I was writing about, I would write it, I would type it up, and I'd spend a couple of days on it. Um, but I didn't really have time to sort of work out the kinks and, and I just kind of write it and then start to film it and then just kind of read from, you know, I'd film it with my laptop and then I'd have the script on my screen. And um, whenever I did that, I realized as I was filming it that some of the stuff that I wrote uh, didn't really sound natural whenever they were said aloud. So in the middle of recording it, I would sit down and, uh, you know, I would, I would stop and I, I would continue recording it and then have to edit it out, but I would take a moment to, to fix whatever it was and try to figure it out while on camera so it was nerve-wracking and then by the but by the time that I finished filming a video I just get so frustrated and I just get so I was just so done with the process that I was just ha I was just ready to just get it over with and so by the end of each video I just it would sound so forced and just didn't sound natural at all so I kinda realized that that wasn't working either and then the worst thing, the absolute worst thing, uh, the worst part of the process was actually sitting down and editing the video. Now, I'm the kind of person, I do not like to look at myself on camera, even though I'm incredibly vain and I'm always looking in mirrors and stuff, trying to make sure that I look okay and that I'm not just the ugly hunk of crap that I think I am. So. But whenever I'd play it back, editing it, then I'd just become far more self-conscious. I'd, I'd just be hyper-aware and sensitive to every little flaw that I just... I would have just uh, panic attacks. I wouldn't actually have panic attacks, but I would just have so much just hatred for what I was looking at and what I was hearing because it just... I don't like the way that I look or the way that I sound or the things that I say. I just feel like I come across in the worst possible way, which I'm sure is going to be the case with this now, which is why I don't know if I'm going to edit this video. Um, I'm probably going to have to because I already made, I already fucked up a bit. Um, but I'm going to try to do as little editing as possible from now on because I just can't, I can't take the time to just look at myself for a long time and try to cut out all the unnecessary stuff, all the dead air and all that shit. Because um, I just, I don't know, I just come across in the worst way. I come across so boring and so irritating, just the sound of my voice. And, and I know that that's not a very confident thing to say. I know that that just shows that I don't have very good self-esteem. One of the things about having dyspraxia is that 
in the, you know, there's a lot going on in your head all the time. And so with me, it's always like that. And, but when it comes to trying to communicate what's going on in my head, because there's just there's so much going on, it just bounces around the thoughts and the, the words and everything that I just end up not knowing what to say because I can't find the right words at the right moment and I'm always distracted and my mind's always going one way and then another and it's just, it's not easy to keep a train of thought, um, which I'm not, I'm not doing a very good job at that right now and this video is probably going to end up being super long, so I'm just going to get to my next talking point. Um, so a, about a week ago, I tried to make my sort of comeback video, and what I was going to do... So what I realized is because I had such a hard time with editing it, uh, because I had such a hard time editing these videos, I realized that what if I just make live videos? What if I just make videos and just go live and just talk? Maybe if, I, maybe if I'm live, maybe the pressure of, of people watch, watching you in the moment um, will allow you to find what to say and maybe people can comment and I could just respond to the comments that people have as they're watching the videos and then I'll be able to focus on a, a specific idea. Um, but so a week ago I was going to try and do that. I thought, well, it's just it worked once, uh, kind of. So what if I just, you know, just go and I was going to do it on a walk. I had my phone and I was just going to go live, just go to YouTube, go live and just make my little comeback video, talk about the things that I wanted to talk about. But then I realized that YouTube has this new policy. They have a number of new policies since the last time I really made any videos. And I realized that in order, now they have this new dumb rule where in order for you to go live, you have to have over a thousand subscribers which I did not know until I tried to go live and I was just furious. I was like, what What kind of crap is this? You know, you, you have to have over a thousand. I don't even have over ten friends. You know, how am I going to get a thousand subscribers? Um, my other channel, which I'm not going to name, uh, my other channel has over a thousand subscribers but I'm not going to go live on there to talk about, you know, dyspraxia and all this other stuff that's very personal to me. Um, even though I'm already kind of, be, I'm kind of opening a lot of personal things anyway, and I don't know why I care. But uh, so because the live video didn't work, I decided, uh, well, I'll just make a video and just talk about the things that I wanted to talk about. But because I was already pretty, you know, frustrated at the fact that I couldn't just go live with it, and um, there were a number of other things kind of going wrong, and I was just, I was already in a bad mood. So whenever I hit record and I started just talking I was just and then all of a sudden as I was I was outside when I did it and as I was filming this jackass in this car just goes by just super loud truck going Rrr! and uh, that made that just kind of you know just broke everything and I made like one video and and then I made a second attempt to and and I said all the things I wanted to say but because I was o already so mad and so frustrated and I was depressed and just you know I just ended up just going on about just how you know my my sorry sad sack life and I just talked about how much I hated myself and I just it wasn't a good comeback video you know I mean this isn't a good comeback video I'm not very good at making videos but um, regardless I just figured I should make another video when I'm in a better mood I tried to upload it actually but uh, for some reason the video just kind of vanished. So it was after that that I realized, why don't I just use my brother's camera, you know, and I could actually rely on uh, using, you know, I could actually just use that and film with it. It's better quality anyway. Uh, and, you know, I don't have, you know, I'll know if it stops recording. It won't just shut off unless it's, unless it's dead. Um, so I tried making that, that new video, and it just reminded me. It, it reminded me of why I stopped making these videos. I mean, 10 months, you know, I hadn't made any videos. I made a good portion in, like, two months. Because I think it was, like, October that I stopped, and then August, whenever I started. So I 
I did spend a good deal trying to attempt to make these videos, but the more that I made them, the more that I realized they were taking a toll on me. And I realized that I'm not the kind of person that should make these kinds of videos. Now, there's things that I'm good at. You know, I can act, I can write, I can direct stuff. But when it comes to just pointing a camera at myself and just, you know, expecting myself to just talk about whatever I'm trying to talk about, uh, and I'm not talking to any specific person, I'm talking to, you know, bas I'm basically talking to myself. I, I just don't know what to do, and my, my mind blanks, and I get nervous, and, and I just screw everything up. Um, so I'm just going to continue on and try to get to the, uh, the things that I was um, trying to make. Uh, so yeah, now I'm back. And... Uh, you know, whenever I started this channel, um, one of the, the major things, one of the, the real major things that I wanted to talk about, uh, which is extremely important to me, but again, because I have this condition, it, it's kind of like a, uh, you know, a catch-22. I want to talk about dyspraxia. I want to educate people in the world and the United States about what it's like to have this condition. But because I have this condition and it affects the way that I think and the way that I talk and the way that I express myself and that way that I communicate, it's really hard to convey the, the specific ideas that I want to convey when it comes to this disorder. So most of the videos that I, that I ended up making ended up being kind of crap and, and, and not really serving that purpose that I was trying to serve. So. I, and I ended up making videos apologizing for just how I was coming across and how I failed at, at my task. I mean, this was really what I wanted. I wanted to do that. I wanted to come out and say, Hi, you know, I'm the theatric dyspraxic. I have dyspraxia. I have this neurological condition that affects everything. It affects coordination. It affects balance. It affects posture. It affects the way that your, your mind processes sensory information. It affects literally everything that you can think of. Um, but how do you, you know, if you have something that affects everything, how do you talk about it? How do you properly express it? And so I came up with a solution, but that's something I'm going to talk about at the end of this video. Um, before I do that, I want to talk about um, why, like, beh the meaning behind the name the theatric dyspraxic. Um, as you can see, you know, I guess because I, I think I come across as pretty dull uh, and pretty kind of monotone, um, and I don't, you know, obviously I don't have a whole lot of confidence and a lot of, like, charisma. Uh, I don't know if I can be considered theatrical um, in, as far as what you would expect when you hear the word. Uh, you expect someone who's theatrical to be, like, super energetic, you know, and I can be, and then most of the time I'm not, and if I'm nervous, then I just get awkward. Um, so, <laughs> I'm so nervous. Um, as I, uh, so, so the, the reason why I call myself the theatric dyspraxic is because one, obviously I'm dyspraxic and I have dyspraxia. Um, so that's obviously a big one. And then the theatric part comes from the, mainly from the fact that I have a background in theater, not professionally. Uh, I wish that I could, but you know, I don't really have the resources to uh, really f pursue it professionally. But acting has always been, since I was kind of young, uh, it's always been something that was very important to me. I've also uh, have a, a big background, a, a large background in writing, mainly writing uh, scripts and songs and uh, like song lyrics and uh, short stories. And I guess that kind of goes into it. It's sort of the artistic aspect of of me. And um, that was so. I I was trying to think of a good name. I didn't want to just call it by my, my actual name, I thought, why don't I try to come up with a, a good name? And then just as I was walking, thinking about it, I just, this name came into my head, the theatric dyspraxic kind of rhymes. And I just, my, I laughed and just thought, that's such a stupid name. 
but I didn't have anything better. So I thought, let's just call myself the Theatric Dyspraxic. And maybe I could have a following, and maybe I could go out and, and talk about dyspraxia from the perspective of an actor. But it didn't, it didn't uh, work out like that. Because apart from all that, apart from the fact that I do theater and I do these creative things and that I have dyspraxia, I'm also a very nervous, shy, uh, awkward, and um, self loathing kind of person. So I get very self-conscious very easily. And when I start trying to make these videos and it's just me, you know, I've never really done like a solo act. Like I've done theater, but it's always with other people. So if I was doing this, having an interview with somebody else, then I would do a much better job, I think, rather than just me up here just being like, an idiot. I don't know if I could ever do stand up. Because if I was doing stand-up, I'd just see the audience, and I'd just be out there alone, like a, you know, a fish out of water, and I'd just freak out, you know? I wouldn't freak, freak out, but I would just blank and just look at the audience just like, you know. So that did not turn out so well. But I decided to come back because I figured that even though my videos haven't gone well and I don't expect anybody to watch them, I don't expect anybody to like them or to become fans. I don't expect it to. I don't expect to be one of those YouTubers that become famous, you know. Because, come on, I don't have the star power for that, you know. I, if I was playing a character, that would be different, because then that would be, be an actor. But if I'm going out there being myself, well, myself is not a very likable person, so. And that's why I don't expect this to become very successful. But I have other things that I want to do with this channel. And I figure that if I continue making some sort of videos, um, then maybe I could find a way to make it work. And maybe I'll get better at it. But I'm not going to put in the same amount of work and the same amount of energy into something that I, I'm not good at and that... Uh, people don't care about anyway. So I'm just going to make videos and if I have something to talk about, uh, you know, then I'll talk about it. So the next part that I want to get to is, um, so the past year, I think it was, it was October that I stopped making the videos. Uh, let's kind of figure out where I was in my life. So as I've mentioned, I've I, you know I've had a history of sort of mental health issues, and I'm, I'm not crazy. I'm not like some sort of schizophrenic. It's primarily been depression, and my depression is closely linked to my dyspraxia. 